everyone and welcome to Doodle Therapy, a drawing show here on Adobe Live where our goal is to come together to doodle and relax. My name is Alice. I'm an illustrator and a muralist based in SF, currently in Taipei, um, and I'm your host of Doodle Therapy. It's great to see everyone again. Um, if you're joining us live, please feel free to introduce yourself as well. Share your name, where you're from. Um, and I don't have a random question of the day yet today, but maybe we can think of one as we're introducing ourselves. Um, so if you're new to the stream, Doodle Therapy is a show where we come together every other week here on Adobe Live and we learn something new about drawing with a special guest every week. Um, this week, I'm really excited to introduce our special guest, Cleonique Ilaska. Welcome, Cleonique. Hi, how are you all? Um, I'm yeah. Cleonique. I'm in, oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. Go ahead. I'm Clinique. I'm an illustrator from Honduras, um, but I'm living and working in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Um, and welcome in to Uriel, Sam, Rin, um, and Jessica, and Necruz. It's great to see you all. Um, please feel free to continue to introduce yourselves. We're a friendly bunch here on Doodle Therapy. Um, and we'll get to introducing Cleonique a little bit more in just a sec and take a look at some of her amazing work. Um, but first, you know, if you're new to the stream, the way this works is this is an interactive show. So every week, you know, we explore a different illustration topic. Like I mentioned with the guests that we have on, it's usually a topic of expertise for the guest. Um, this week, we are exploring mythological creatures. And if you're not familiar with Cleonique's work, uh, we will take a look mm -hmm. in just a second and you will quickly understand why this is our topic for this week. Um, and so we will be creating illustrations of mythological creatures. And since this is an interactive show, you are also totally invited to draw along and illustrate your own mythological creatures from your imagination or from myths that you've heard in the past. Um, and also, you know, it's great to chat and hear some questions from um, the live viewers. So if you've got a question about what we're up to or whether it's a um, technique that we're doing in Photoshop or Fresco or a question for Cleonique about her story, feel free to ask it in the chat and um, we'll get to answering it. Um, so yeah, without further ado, um, I'm going to hop on over and show some of Cleonique's work up here on this side of the screen. Um, Clinique, Clinique, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, what you're all about? Um, and we still have to come up with a random question of the day. So maybe we can, we can figure something out there. Mm. So, um, I went to, I lived in Honduras before I came to the United States. Um, I came here to study art at the Santa College of Art and Design. Um, after I graduated, I've been working as a freelance illustrator. I worked as a designer as well. I studied uh, illustration and graphic design. Um, after a few years of working as a designer, I decided that I wanted to pursue freelance illustration full time. Um, and that's what I've been doing so far, building my career up. And um, I've been wanting to get into the children's market more. So I am working on picture books, I'm working on a board game right now, um, and creating original paintings on my free time. I work mostly digital, um, but I create paintings for gallery shows and for myself on my free time. That's cool. Um, so you came here um, to go to college and um, after you graduated, you worked as a designer and then transitioned to doing um, freelance illustration. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you for sharing. I think, so every stream that we're on, we have a random question of the day. Sometimes it's been completely random. Like last, the last stream we did, it was, if you were a sandwich, what kind of sandwich would you be? <laughs> um, it's just like an icebreaker to get to know everyone. Um, but I think, you know, as per the conversation we were having before the stream started, um, I'd like to ask as the random question of the day, what is a um, mythological like story or um, like cultural story that you heard when you were younger um, that is your favorite? Like you were telling me some kind of uh, scary, but also like slightly funny ones. Funny because mm. they're so scary. Um, so that's also a question I would like to 
ask the post to the chat as well. Um, but yeah, do you mind sharing like a random mythological story that you heard when you were little, maybe from your parents or from your family? Yeah, um, in Honduras, uh, when I was little and we wouldn't go to sleep at my grandfather's house with my cousins, we would be told about this donkey from hell who would roam the streets at night. Um, he had really red, like red eyes and you could hear him click clacking through the night. And if you were awake as a little child, they would come to your window. And if you looked outside, they would take you away. Um, at the time, I thought the story was scary, but when my cousins would visit me, uh, my parents, and they wouldn't go to sleep and I was tired, I would tell them that story and I would tell them, I would use it to threaten them and tell them, well, if you don't go to sleep now, the donkey will take you to hell with them. So you should go to bed right now. And actually, wow. one of my cousins still tells me about stories that I used to, I used to tell her more stories. I would always scare her. And I didn't know that she believed them all until we grew older. So yeah that's like evil but also genius <laughs> to like tell your kids there's a evil donkey who'll uh punish them for not sleeping um yeah i feel yeah, like the my worst parents part is that... oh sorry oh no go ahead the go worst ahead. part is that in the worst part is that in honduras we have there's... people travel by horse uh through the street so we would listen to horses uh in the night of people going home so there was oh. always a horse that i could use as like well you know there you there, there they come so you should probably try to be the donkey now. So that's so yes, scary <laughs> yeah. yeah thanks for sh sharing um and that <laughs> incidentally could be a piece of inspiration for anyone who might be trying to decide what mythological creature to draw you could draw this like evil donkey um Mm. who is, you know, here to punish children for not sleeping and roams around at night uh, looking for disobedient children. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, mm. I guess if I were to share um, a mythological story as well, Christina actually um, names the one I was thinking about in the chat, which is the Chinese Zodiac story, um, where basically the 12 Zodiac animals, like, for example, we're in the year of the ox right now. Um, there's also like the rabbit, dragon, I'm a lamb, um, there's horse. They were all like in a race. I forgot why they were in a race, but there were 13 animals in a race. And um, there was also a cat. And for some reason, the cat was like last place. So that's why the cat is not in the Zodiac. And the mouse um, like sat on the dog or something. So the order that the animals came in in the race is the order that they're in for the zodiac and if anyone knows why uh what the relationship between the cat and the mouse was i think it was significant um let me know but um that's kind of a fun a fun story uh you know in the mythological origins in in you know chinese mm -hmm. culture for for the zodiac um yeah, so that kind of leads into our topic for the day. So if you, you know, if you simply take a look at Cleonique's work, you'll see that, you know, you, she makes such beautiful use of um, colors as well as these like really expressive animal characters. So when we were brainstorming the topic to explore for this week, we thought of illustrating mythological creatures. Um, so I'm going to transition over here to both of our our artboards. So, um, Clinique, do you mind telling us a little bit about the mythological creatures that you're going to work on this week, as well as maybe like where you are in the process? It looks like you've got like pretty clean line art. Like, what's your mm -hmm. next steps, and what are you typically focusing on at this stage of the illustration process? Yeah. Um, so for my piece today, I decided to go with El Cadejo, which is a Central American folktale of a deer dog, basically. Um, mm. And it comes in two versions, a black and a white, an evil and a good. So I thought about them being not so much evil and good, but kind of two sides of the same coin, light and shadow, um, and not particularly too evil looking. Um, so I start with a very clean drawing because that really saves me time when I go into line work. 
and when I'm deciding on composition. So usually this is the type of sketch that I will send clients or use myself to create my final work. And mm. it, it really helps me to know I'm not a very messy uh, sketcher. It helps me. I, I want to on my own time. But when it comes to work, uh, working digitally, I like to work very clean if I can. After I create my very clean drawing, I go into line work. And once I finish, I go into color, which is the most expressive part of my process. But the drawing, the line work is where I'm most relaxed and I'm <coughs> brainstorming in the sketching process. So I have different moods throughout my work. Oh, I but, see. Yeah. So would you say that currently, um, what part of the process are you in? Would this be like line art that you already like use mm. as your final? Or is it more of the sketch? This is my sketch. So my line work will wow. usually be thinner and more detailed sometimes. Dang, yeah. this is a, the cleanest sketch I've seen like yeah, thus far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like um, to that's know funny. exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, well, shout out to all the clean sketchers out there um, in the chat. I myself am a very messy sketcher, as you can see. Um, I'm drawing a dragon and the sketch in the sketch phase, I try to focus more on like the energy and the movement of my mm -hmm. wrist and the hands. I'm just kind of like feeling it, you know, and then I mm. really like to get precise in when I um, start adding in the shapes. I actually find that when I'm really tight with the sketch, um, I it's like harder for me to like keep the overall image in mind, strangely. Mm -hmm. um, but like if you guys are watching live, let us know which type of sketch sketcher you are if you're like a clean sketch a sketcher like a clinique or if you're a messier sketcher like myself um yeah so that's that's really cool to to see in the process i'm curious like if for example um it looks like your sketch is on one layer um let's say you mm. decided to change something like you did change your sketch i think between when you showed it to did, me on, yeah. over the weekend so um let's say you like move one of the um deer dogs like mm -hmm. over 10 pixels and so you know there now it's like kind of cut and messy would you go back and like clean that area up or would you kind of just leave it because it's a sketch no i clean it up because <laughs> I, I need to know exactly what i'm doing i need to be yeah. very precise because i I hate fixing things later. So I try to make sure that my sketch is as clean as possible. So I don't even think about it when I go for line work and color. I'm like, yep, oh, it's good. I know it's good. Yeah. I can just Dang, I'm jealous. That's final. like definitely mm -hmm. the smart, like efficient way um, to, to go about doing things. And I think, you know, going back to just taking a look at some of your work, like I think you can actually see that in your finals. Like it's mm -hmm. everything feels like really intentional and like precise so that's really cool thanks for th thanks for sharing that with us um and so you know now we're gonna just get started with our doodling and our um chatting portion of the stream but if you're watching us feel free to also draw along and um think of a mythological creature whether it's from your imagination or from like a real story and um feel free to draw you can also share it with us if you um end up creating something you can mess it you can tweet or you know tag mm -hmm. us uh cleonique is at cleonique which is above her uh avatar and then i'm at by alice lee and it's always great to see um anthony carvajal says my sketching looks like graphic shorthand and marley retag says um their ink is clean and non-photo blue messy um oh yeah yeah my ink is i guess that it would be cleaner as well um yeah so i'm just gonna you know start oh yeah and i also um put together a little mood board so this is just how i gather inspiration i went to this awesome temple mm. last week and i found these like really old um like carvings there and i just love this style i love um how expressive the line is and it's a little bit more angular than like my typical work mm -hmm. and then I found these um paintings of like 
Chinese dragons. And my work is really soft and friendly and cute, I would say. Um, but I thought that it'd be fun to take this stream opportunity to draw something that's a little bit more like angry and fearsome, which are like tones that I haven't explored recently. I haven't done a angry drawing in a while. Um, and in particular, like Chinese dragons are so angry. <laughs> So I thought that maybe I would try that myself. And I also wanted to share my final piece from our stream two weeks ago, Patterns with Frankie Sihi. Um, this was my final pattern that I ended up creating. And um, I also ended up making it into a Chapao pattern. So that's in case anyone mm. watching today also tuned in um, previously. So yeah, now it's time to explore this uh, dragon that I uh, started working on. Um, so Clinique, thanks for sharing also your um, story of like, you know, coming over here to study um, illustration. Um, I'm curious if you would be open to telling us a little bit about your journey in becoming a freelance illustrator, since you mentioned you also worked as a designer and now you're a full-time full -time freelancer. Yeah, um, I first started, I first started working editorial, mostly editorial illustration. Um, but then I'm, I've done book projects in the past, but they've been here guides for the most part, coloring books, a little bit of everything. I didn't want to fall into any specific market because I wanted to do it all. So it yeah. was a little harder for me to to pinpoint what I what direction I wanted. It wasn't until later on that I wanted to push more for children's, and I've been trying to gear my my artwork um, towards more children's illustration friendly picture books licensing. I used to do more licensing before as well, but I wanted to create more. I wanted to branch out and create for more markets. In the last couple of years, I've been I've been working on more, uh, one more coloring book and a actually this June my first picture book coming out. And wow! Yeah, and Congrats. I'm also working. Thank you. I'm also working on a secret board game project which Ooh. will come out soon as well and I was lucky to be part of the Adobe Community Fund residency last year and I created a piece for MTA that is now yeah, I live saw on that. trains yeah it live on trains in New York City so this these last couple of years have been um this last year especially has been a lot more prolific and a lot more exciting and i feel like a little bit like snowball snowballing a little more yeah and my work has that's... also improved a lot more Ooh, yeah i mean i think momentum is definitely a um a real thing it's both psychological and real like it i think that um sharing your work especially like tends to get more eyeballs on it um mm. Yeah, I'm curious, you know, you mentioned um, that you, you know, figured out that you wanted to focus more on children's book illustration. And I'm curious mm. about like what your process was for coming to that realization for yourself. Yeah, um, I when I used to work at editorial illustration, I didn't really enjoy uh, some. I, I actually worked with an Italian newspaper for a few years and very often. And the schedule was killing me because uh, yeah. the turnaround was very short. And I also had to deal with um, the difference in time. So I usually would deliver my work at 3 a.m. And oh, it, yeah. it, it was very hard on me. But also I realized that I'm not so much a conceptual thinker as I am a narrative thinker. Ooh, so I what try to... Hmm, I realize yeah, that... I'm more, I like to tell a story, not so much create a concept. 
So I thought I'm more suited to storytelling than I am to conceptual projects. Yeah, what an interesting distinction. Thanks for sharing that. Mm. I feel like I'm going to mm. be thinking about this for the rest of of the day. Um, yeah, it made it yeah. easier for me to know what I was doing once I realized how my brain works. And it made it easier for me to think of concepts for projects, um, made it easier for me to have a direction once I realized that. Yeah, I'm trying to think about which which one I feel more resonant with, whether it's the conceptual side versus the narrative side. Mm. Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm slightly more of a narrative thinker. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I think so. I mean, in terms of what comes naturally to me, like for example, I think it's really interesting that in your process you. Um, like to get the sketch really tight before you move into the final because for me I often will just kind of get the basic composition down and I'll just start drawing and I'll just like figure out mm. the rest later so sometimes I like stuff a metaphor in at the last minute because I'm just focused on like the character and I'm just like oh yeah it's, you know this, this is the story blah 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 mm. um, so I can see that the narrative side comes a little bit easier um, and, you know, if anyone is also thinking about this and listening to this live, I'm curious to know if you identify as a conceptual or a narrative thinker or another, a third type or a fourth type of, of thinker, too. Um, and also, um, just taking a look at the chat, um, Rin says that they've been, she's been thinking a lot about a specific mythological story that calls to her, nothing comes to mind, but she's very drawn to Celtic and Japanese folklore. Um, yeah, I, also you could also um, think of your own mythological story. Uh, for example, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon recently, so I feel like whatever I end up drawing will be slightly influenced by that. Um, mm -hmm. And thanks to Christina for the kind words about my fabric pattern. Um, just gonna go back to it really quick. Um, Miss D wants to know how do I print designs on fabric? Um, the way you can do that is there's a ton of different vendors out there. There's Spoonflower, which is, I think, one of the largest yeah. fabric mm. printing companies. So you can just get that printed out on a variety of fabrics. Like uh, I was looking at linen, but you could also get it printed on like blanket or like curtain fabric. Um, so that's what I was going to do. Um, and I hope that answers your question. Um, so I'm really curious, um, Cleonique, like once you identified that you wanted to explore children's book illustrations, what were like steps that you took, you know, once you identified that as like a goal of yours? Hmm. Um, I tried to start working on sample work for it, but um, I found myself a, too, too busy at the time to work on real world samples uh, from me submitting work to magazines and publishers I've been told that it's really good to show like children and in real scenes and action happening and a story being told and those are going to be the best samples you're going to want in your portfolio I didn't have enough but um, as I worked on more work for gallery shows and for editorial uh, clients I was able to gather enough portfolio material to show to art directors could attempt to show, put forth my best effort as a picture book illustrator, but it was still hard. Um, but last year, um, I was able to work with How Kids Books on this lovely book written by um, Leah Kessler that was called Rat Fair that is called Rat Fair and is coming out oh. in, and that's the one that's coming out in June. So the art director, really, um, I really appreciate that she trusted me to create this book. And now I have real samples, a real sample of a real book yeah. that I can show art directors. Um, it was hard for me to get my first picture book because I didn't have real samples 
in my portfolio. And that's definitely something that I recommend. Always have work that you need for the jobs that you want. And right. sometimes someone will take a gamble on you. And <clears throat> that is amazing. And that's, I believe, what gave me this opportunity was so that someone believed in me. Um, but now I was able to prove myself so I can hopefully show other art directors, hey, I've done it and I can do it again. Right. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like the classic chicken and egg problem. Like, how can you have yes. that work <laughs> unless so you receive the opportunity? So the solution is to self-initiate that work. Um, mm -hmm. But it can be hard, you know, since we're all busy and you have your current projects in front of you. Too, so that's really cool um and it's also cool that you mentioned uh you you tried to create that portfolio through the opportunities that you had whether it was like a gallery project or a client project mm -hmm. um like i saw that you've done a lot of work with giant robot um store uh yeah. which i've who i've also been doing some shows with too um and they're so like i feel like that is the perfect kind of opportunity to try to try to work in you know accomplishing a specific type of goal that you might have um, because it's so open-ended and they want you to like explore new things um, for their shows as well yeah it's been i started working with giant robot last year and i've been very fortunate to work with other galleries as well because i don't work traditionally very often but for these gallery shows i've been really pushing myself to do Ooh. so as I started as a watercolorist in college, but I quickly moved to digital because I thought that it would make it easier for me to revise projects and get projects done quick, more quickly. So I, I moved to digital, but I, I still wanted all those uh, watercolor textures to come through and my previous influences. So that's why my work has a watercolor feel to it. But on my free time, when I create work for gallery shows, I try to push those skills uh, further Ooh, so that I can so keep improving. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not to interrupt. Um, actually, if you don't mind, I'll take it back to some of the sample works that I uh, we originally took a look at at the beginning of the stream. So, hmm. for example, like... This Totoro piece that you made for a giant robot, um, was mm -hmm. that digital or analog? That's analog. Ah, I see. Yeah. What about the color, prints? ink? Yeah. That's it's also so cool. watercolor. Yes. Oh, I see. I mean, your work is so consistent. Like, so it's hard to tell if it's watercolor or digital because it's. Um, it just, I mean, sorry, analog or digital, because it just looks like watercolor to me, if that makes sense. Mm. Like the um, Mind Gods one, that one I assume was in, made in fresco, but it looks, it looks yes. like both digital and analog. So that's really cool. Thanks for explaining to it. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah uh, to answer a question in the chat, um, I don't think Cleonic has gone into detail about the board game yet, but you've mentioned it. Someone's asking, oh, yeah. has she talked about the board game yet? I can't talk about the board game, <laughs> um, but ah. it is a huge board game and it has Ooh. a ton of art by me and other artists and cool. it's very exciting. I wish I could talk more, but I know it's so a suspenseful. huge game. It has a ton of art. Mm. I'm yeah. very excited about it. I've been working on it for the last, for, for this entire year. So wow. Mm. We have to guess, you guys, and then Cleonique will let us mm. know by winking. Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> just no, kidding. Soon, soon. <laughs> yeah, okay. soon. We'll we'll keep an eye out. Well, if you want to um, know what the secret board game is, um, you guys can also follow Cleonique at Cleonique, uh, and then maybe when it's announced, um, you know, you'll get to see it on her social medias. Mm. Ooh. So, um, you know, we're just both creating our pieces. It's cool to see, um, what, do you mind sharing like what brush you're using as well in fresco? Cause I really love 
get how it's how it's looking so far. It's looking great. Ooh, it's the Kyle it. drawing using... box. Yes, the perfect pencil to, which I like that it looks pretty close to real pencil. You can go really soft yeah. with it too. The um, brushes in Fresco are, are really, really good. I actually think yes. um, when I draw on uh, iPad, it feels a lot more natural to me. And I think it's partly because of the format of the iPad, but it's also because the brushes um, somehow feel, feel more realistic, I guess. Maybe it's cause also because mm. of the, the, I, the Apple Pencil. Um, and Rachel, my Yay. who's joining, welcome Rachel, also says, have I missed this? No, we are about halfway through our first day, so you have not. And if anyone has questions to ask Cleonique, feel free to uh, mention it. Oops. Um, so I know that we've sort of touched on this topic a little bit with talking about your board game and um, children's book illustrations. Um, and I'm curious, you know, we've all had like a lot of time in the last year to think deeply about our paths forward and our career and our lives mm. since we've all been um, more isolated because of the pandemic. And I'm curious if in the last year you've um, realized any new goals for yourself, um, whether it's artistically, career-wise or um, personal. Um, for example, for me, I think I've um, just solidified some more of my goals in wanting to do even like bigger projects, like bigger murals mm. than I had before, um, especially because during the quarantine, we weren't able to um, paint as many murals. So I'm curious if that if that quarantine time has um, yielded any new insights for you. Before the, uh, yes, when I, when I had just started the pandemic, I was part of, when the pandemic just, uh, I was part of this workshop to create a cook pitch. And it was with Emmett, Helen, and Justin Jordan. And I learned how to create a comic book pitch for the first time. Uh, since I didn't, since I didn't study sequential art, comic books I've always been interested in creating my own graphic novel so I started creating this pitch uh, called Zerani which I'm still polishing with my agent um, and that is my my baby right now and it's my dream oh. is to be an author illustrator but I also want to create more graphic novels for children so smaller stories but full of fantasy and a lot of very wonderful characters hopefully that people can connect with and that's one of my goals that i wanted to pursue this past year is um i want to make my own books and i'm going to try so i've been getting yeah. better at writing and that's when one that's been one of my goal my goals but um my work also ramped up in the last year so i haven't been able to dedicate full time to this but I will again soon. And that's one of my goals that I thought might as well just go for it. So I want to be an author illustrator of comic books, but also hopefully get more picture book projects. And I love books. So I just, that I wanted to immerse myself in the book market um, completely. So that was my goal. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I, I feel so much resonance with that. I feel. I would also love to be an author illustrator, um, but the process of developing your own projects when you have other client projects happening and other maybe more time sensitive work happening is like mm -hmm. so hard sometimes. Um, and you know, I do put, like to pose this question to the doodle therapy viewers occasionally, but you know, we are in at the end of May, so we're almost at June. Um, you know, almost at the middle of 2021. Um, and it's a good time to reflect on what our goals are for the next six months of the year. Now that, you know, the first five months have passed by. So um, if you are in this, you know, mind space to do so, I invite you to just take a second and 
think about where, you know, how you would like the next um, five months to go for you and what some goals for that time might look like. Um, and I'm happy to share as well. Um, I think because of the pandemic, you know, it was really hard to paint murals. Um, mm. I actually turned down a lot of projects because I didn't feel like they were very safe to do during the pandemic. Um, and I'm really excited to um, be going back to the States in a week uh, as I'm currently in Taiwan because I've basically got like a bunch of mural projects lined up like right when I get back and you know it's going to be the summer of mural again so um, that's going to be exciting and in five months I just want to look back and have some pride and you know maybe feel like a little bit of lost time was made up in you know this past summer for the time that was lost during the pandemic. Sounds very exciting to do murals. I, I think I've only done one mural once. It's a lot of work. Ooh, what mural did you create? Ah, let me think. It was probably a few years ago. It was back home, and it was a very small wall, and it was very hard to do. And I didn't. I I, I did. I used to use paint. Um, I've worked on a park on a local park here in Savannah, and that was on the ground creating games for children and that was really hard to paint on asphalt and i've worked um, how to say i worked outdoors on an open air painting exhibition but these big like wooden boards and i just tried to paint and i was jealous of everyone that knew how to use the aerosol cans and oh I yeah didn't. those yeah those are so much faster but, but so um yeah. yeah those the spray the spray cans are so much faster but they require so much more finesse because if you like don't do it correctly then it gets all over the place um mm. and you have to kind of embrace more of the like messiness i feel i'd like to learn one day to do it i'd like to be able to do murals just because I find the medium incredibly exciting and just yeah. like a, as a community project that you've like made and given to everyone, which I, I really love that. Yeah. For me, there's something about the public art aspect that is really exciting to me. Um, just being able to create art that is super accessible because, you know, it's as long mm -hmm. as you're just in that space and you can see it, then you can experience it and you don't have to necessarily, you know, pay for it or, um, you know, have a certain qualification to experience it. So, yeah. I love um, that, especially when it adorns cities and towns and it just brings a place alive. It just, it's amazing when I see public art, it just breathes life into a place and the community loves it. Mm -hmm. yeah um so i'm curious you know kind of bring it back to what you were sharing earlier about your story um and your process in working more in children's book illustration do you mind um sharing a little bit about your process of both um finding your first agent um like how did you know who was the right person to work with and what was that process like, as well as um, what it was like to work on your first children's book? Hmm. So um, my current agent, I, I, I've applied to her three times. Uh, her name is Nicole to go at to go to agency. And I wanted to be a part of her agency just because she has some of the artists that I've been following for years and who I love their work. And I thought that if I one day have work that could compare to my favorite artists, like I want to be standing next to them kind of. And yeah. I, I thought that being with an agent that represents them would hopefully bring me a little closer. But also I thought, well, these amazing artists are 
are being represented by her. So I thought she has to be amazing. And when I was able to finally have an interview with her, I realized that she is, and she is incredibly lovely and one of the loveliest people I've met in Aww. this industry. And I'm extremely excited to be with, I've been with her since August and I love feeling like an agent cares for you and there's a relationship yeah. and I, 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 I didn't really look too far because I guess I knew that I wanted to be part of her agency and when I was given the opportunity to do so I was not disappointed it's been a lovely relationship but I know that finding an agent is very hard and I, I applied to her three times and it wasn't until the third time that I finally got an interview so you oh, have to okay. give up on the agent that you really want you can always keep applying uh, improving your work and and maybe one day you you will be it was definitely not a once one my first shot and i got it but since then i've been working on the board game project but the picture book was prior that was not something i was able to work with her on but i handled oh, that okay. on my own and yes i handled that on my own and it went very well my art director was incredibly kind and she worked with me on the schedule and, and she guided me through the book. The book was actually just originally 20 pages. It grew to be double the size. And oh, wow. It, it, it ended up being an incredibly challenging but great learning experience for me. It was my first time storyboarding a whole book. It was my first time uh, having to make sure that my characters look exactly the same page to page. Consistency uh. was a lot harder than I thought it'd be, especially with characters that people reading the book and children reading the book will be fond of and following through their little journey. And a lot of revisions, but what I enjoyed was that everything happened at the storyboard stage. So once I went to final, um, I pretty much cruised through it. I was getting my work done and it was fun to create illustrations that were part of a bigger project and seeing them all fall into place, but still being guided by my art director and making sure the author was in, was happy with what she was seeing as well so I, ha I still haven't had the book in my hand but that's what I'm looking forward to the most is having the physical project that I poured yeah. months of my life into in my hands and seeing it in children's hands will be very exciting too especially because it's a wordless book so you kind of you kind of create the story uh, as you go I, I mean oh, okay. I made the images as clear as possible but i really would love to hear someone how someone else would read it to their children or even asking questions what do you think is happening in the spread and in this page and i find that just very exciting i like having my work be a physical medium and not just yeah. on the screen <laughs> yeah i i totally agree that's like the best part is um, seeing it, you know, being able to hold hold an artifact of what you made. Mm. And also, your piece is looking so amazing so far. It's so cute. Oh, thank the you. Two, um, the two, the two goat, the two deer, deer, deer dogs, dogs. <laughs> deer dogs. Love it. Um, yeah, that's and thanks for sharing your story with your agent. I actually reached out to children's book agents as well. And I actually, I did reach out to your agent, I believe, and she mm. responded with good feedback. Um, but I, I believe it was a rejection as well. Um, <laughs> so it's actually really um, like inspiring to hear your uh, story mm. about how mm. it took like three tries to get in the door. Mm. And I think that that's like, that seems sort of um, typical for me, to me, like, that that would be part of the process 
um, because unless you already have like a perfect portfolio that's like ready to go for the children's book market, like it makes sense that you, one would get feedback about the, you know, illustration portfolio that you have and try to improve it um, as well. So props to you for sticking with it and um, continuing yeah. with with the uh, the process. Sometimes it may be just uh, the, the, the fit or it, like I've been told sometimes when I was applying before that they like some agents in the past when I would apply, they would tell me, I like your work, but it doesn't necessarily suit the markets that I work in or it's too similar oh, to a style I already have. So they would tell me, I, so I tried to be, um, I tried to submit to agencies later on that may not have had some someone that had a similar style to me so that I wouldn't compete with them. And mm. that I'm that yeah. might be in this in the market I, I want. Um that makes sense. But it's Your work is so I, I unique like, though. Thank you. I'm sorry, what were you I've saying? I've applied to a few. I've applied to I've I've, I've applied to I applied to a few agents, um, like maybe 10 on that round of, of applications. Oh, um, wow. I see. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get to interviews on that round because I just, I, I, I just, uh, went with my dream agent. And... Yeah. Good on but you. But I recommend for... everyone apply. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. For sticking with it. And mm -hmm. yeah. Um, no, I was just going to say good on you for having the conviction to stick with your like dream choice um, mm. and, and for not giving up on that process. Mm. I recommend like people applying to keep, keep applying and to do your research and, and go through those interviews and Make sure that even if someone is amazing, maybe it's not the best fit, and and sometimes that's okay, because this is yeah, going to be a totally. long term relationship. So you want to make sure it's right. Yeah, I think, um, and like when you work as an illustrator, uh, those those of you who you know have been in the game for some time will know that. Rejection is just like a part of the process. Um, unfortunately, like you're going to face rejection, like in illustration, um, no matter you know what stage of the process you are. But the good news is that you usually end up building like a pretty thick skin. And I feel like I'm at the point now where I really appreciate it when people are just upfront with me and just can mm -hmm. tell me like, it's probably a no right now, but these are the reasons why. And that feedback is like gold. I think it's much mm -hmm. better than being told like, oh yeah, you're good. Like, but you know, maybe we'll just keep in touch or something. And there's like, it's not maybe not necessarily rejection, but it's not really helpful either. So, um, there's like always gold in the most like direct rejections. Um, I, I feel at this point, um, yeah. Um, mm. yeah, Jesus asks, will there be book signings? Question mark, question mark for your uh, children's <laughs> book. Yes. Um, hopefully we're, we're working with Pal Kids books to see what that will look like. Um, I am fully vaccinated, so everyone should be safe around, but, um, still precautions will most likely be in place and, um, small children won't are not able to be vaccinated yet so i i don't know the oh parents i see we'll hope be able to come pick up uh copies that i sign so i'd like to since i live in georgia uh i would like to if possible travel to nearby towns and cities to sign books in maybe atlanta here in savannah athens maybe yeah. jacksonville or charleston I don't know if I'll you travel should, far. You should come to SF. That'd be so fun. You can like that. hang out at my studio with them. Um, oh my God, that'd be amazing. Yeah. 
Um, Jessica wants to know what brush are you using right now? Um, since I think you shared it earlier, but it'd be good yeah. to... Cool, so it's the draw Kyle's Drawing Box Perfect Pencil 2, um, mm. which is in Fresco. Um, and also, mm. you know, I'm using Photoshop and Clearnique is using Fresco on the iPad. So, yeah. you know, we've got just about five more minutes left um, in the stream. So I was wondering if you would mind sharing, uh, zooming out on the piece that you're working yeah. on and maybe telling us a little bit about like the progress you've made since this is day one and we've got day two coming up. Like what would be your next steps when you look at this? You know, what are you thinking about as you um, draw this? Yes, so I'll, I'll have the drawing done so that it, I can paint tomorrow. And the line work is pretty, it's a pretty slow process. It's what it takes me the longest. And it, but it is I enjoy the most. I usually play music or I watch movies while I draw and I just relaxingly draw my line work. And then I have more fun when I paint. So tomorrow I'll be painting this with, maybe I'll try the Fresco Live brush or the Kyle watercolor brushes, which is my favorite brushes to use. And yeah, I'll just keep building color tomorrow, but Today, I will finish my drawing, so yeah. Yeah, those watercolor fresco brushes are really, really amazing. Mm. Um, especially when they like spread and they look just like paint. Um, so yeah, thanks for sharing. And I also am the same way. I, I love to watch TV shows while I work. It feels very therapeutic mm -hmm. when you end up doing that. Um, yeah, so it seems like your process is like, you're laying down, you laid down the sketch first before the stream, and then now you're working on mm -hmm. the line, line work. And then um, after that, you'll be going in with like color and adding in like textures and all of that. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Pretty straightforward. Yeah. On my, <laughs> yeah. Um, on my end, I also, you know, came in with a really loose sketch and um, just started working out the basic shapes. I want to incorporate this like warrior character somehow so I'm trying to keep a little bit of space for that and um, you can see that um, if I can find it my sketch actually looks a little different from uh, the final composition so that's kind of what I was saying at the beginning I like to um, explore the composition a little bit uh, and not have it super precise um, cause I guess my brain just likes this, likes to think about it in this way. So, um, I'll also be adding in more colors, um, as well. Mm. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that. And we can, you know, get back to what you were doing before, but, um, it's always fun to see the, the process and hear, mm. you know, what the other artist is thinking about as you're, as you're uh, working on it. I wish I was faster, but I'm not. Maybe my work looks like it is, but it's not. I'm pretty slow. Oh, really? I feel like you're pretty fast since you got this far already. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah I... yeah, I think I'm a decently fast-ish illustrator, but I um, procrastinate a lot. Like I, I feel like sometimes I, I overthink things. And so I've just had to be fast because I was going to be late if I didn't um, speed up. I used to, I, I listen to podcasts when I'm trying to speed up so that I'm not being distracted by my TV. Oh. If I'm watching, but uh, if I have time, I like to watch uh, Studio Ghibli movies or other animated movies yeah. or shows. But podcasts yeah. really work when I'm trying to focus. Well, we are almost at the end of our stream now so i do want to say thanks to everyone for joining us live um for sharing your mythological creature stories thanks to um cleonique for also joining and sharing a little bit about her story as well as um process we will be back here tomorrow at the same time at 3 p.m pacific working on our mythological creatures illustrations um and if you also ended up doodling any mythological creatures it would totally make my day to see them. Um, feel free to share and tag us. Cleonique is at Cleonique. This is her handle and I'm at by Alice Lee. Um, and also if you're watching the stream, 
um, later on and not while we're live. Feel free to at me any questions that you might have of um, things that we might not have covered as well. So yeah, it's been great um, to have you on Cleonique and I'm excited for our stream tomorrow and to see where we both end up taking our illustrations. Um, until then, have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you later. Bye. Mm-hmm.